as you are waiting, feel free to um, put your, your name, where you're from, um, even um, your title, what you do. If you are a tech coach, if you're a teacher, if you're a paraprofessional, um, or what you teach, let us know in the chat. We're going to give it about one more minute. Thank you all for joining us. Again, those of you who are just joining us, um, feel free to put your name, your title, and where you're joining us from in the chat box. We're going to give it about one more minute. Okay, again, welcome. Welcome to the GEG Louisiana series. Um, brought in partnership with you, uh, brought to you in partnership with LA Chat, my PD 24-7. Okay. Um, this is also brought in part to you with StreamYard. So again, we are, uh, we're going to practice with streaming out to StreamYard with YouTube. So look, be looking forward to that, um, to where it's just a YouTube link where we can record and send directly to YouTube and Periscope and other platforms as well. We have Mr. Riley Brazier, who is our founder of GEG Louisiana. Um, he is on the call. Um, he is a certified innovator trainer, level one, level two, a certified administrator and the leader of GEG Louisiana. He is also um, Google Cloud certified. And my name is Tyler Colson. I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I am um, a Google certified trainer, captain of GEG Louisiana, a leader of GEG Global, as well as a STEM fellow. If you are looking for other resources as well, feel free to visit us at gglouisiana.com. We also have a Facebook group. If you just search GEG Louisiana, it'll come up. We are also on Twitter, Google Groups, and Instagram. Okay, so I'm so excited because we have Ms. Jessica Williams, who is our presenter. She is going to be talking about getting started with a student news show which is so exciting because we always want our students to be involved, hands-on, and be creative. So let's give it up for Ms. Jessica Williams. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Tyler. I'm so happy to be, be in Louisiana today. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen just so that you guys can get an idea really quickly. Okay, so first things first. I wanna make sure you know who I am and we're friends now. Um, so my email is here, it's sayjessand at gmail.com. Um, my tie to Louisiana is through Wiley. Wiley and I have presented together for a couple of years now. Um, I'm actually his mentor for Google Innovator and I'm so excited about his project. He's fantastic, a wonderful resource. Um, a little bit about my background so you know I'm not some stray from the side of the road. Uh, I am, uh, I started off as a language arts teacher for six years for middle school students. Um, I love language arts, I love reading, I love writing. Uh, I then became a library media specialist. So uh, I was very like, that was the same year, the same year I became a library media specialist, I, my school district went one to one with Google Chromebooks. Um, and in that year I had to come, you know, learn all the tech stuff. So I, in the last six and a half years, I've become a Google educator, trainer, cloud certified innovator. Um, and my current role, instead of being a straight up library media specialist, they've now dubbed me in my um, district in Manchester, Connecticut, a, a tech integration specialist. And I've also, because you know, when you become a tech integration specialist, they sometimes, you have to have a flexible schedule but I co-teach a video production class for our middle school, seventh and eighth graders. So see, these are some of our pictures. Um, Tyler will help 
with this next part, hopefully. Tyler, if you could put the bit.ly slash student news with Jess so people can follow along and have this resource. Here's the deal for today. Here's my goal. The goal is um, whether school starts virtually, blended, or in person in the fall. I want you to have all the resources at your disposal to do student news. And that's not just like slapping kids in front of um, you know, a desk and calling it the news. Uh, I feel like whether, um, whether, whether or not you see this as, as what it is, I, I always go back to my language arts roots. We want kids to be able to story tell for different purposes, for information, for creativity. We want them to present in front of authentic audiences. And we also recognize that through storytelling, there is a structured process of storytelling. There's coming up with ideas and brainstorming, there's drafting, uh, there's editing, and then you add on this extra component of video editing. And how does that happen? Um, so I really want you to see the process of this and um, to feel confident knowing today that whether you decide to do like a straight up student news show, or you want to maybe have a news project where your students um, pick a topic of current events and then they present it like it's going to be a new show. Um, that's the beauty of this presentation is today that even if you wanna start a news show virtually, blended, in person, or you wanna do a news project, you can use the tools that I'm gonna provide you today for that. Um, here's our agenda. Um, logistics, everything from physical um, to digital equipment. I will talk about the news cycle, that gradual release from, all right, we're brainstorming ideas through writing to all the way presenting the new show and going live if you choose to do so. I'll introduce some of my favorite tools. We won't have time for the hands-on challenge, but I think you might like some of the challenges and you might use them with a couple of your students. Um, I also want to just show one quick model. I'm a big fan of showing models. Um, and I want to start off this session today and be respectful of your time and keep it to short. But here's an example of a news package done by seventh graders. Um, their names are Laylene and Mylees. And they thought they brainstormed and pitched the idea of a news story about a special hallway in our school. That special hallway is called Dream Street. And it's um, home to our, our self-included or inclusion classrooms and stuff like that. So it's a one minute and 30 second news package and I'm gonna show it to you right now and I will make sure it's good to go. Although this hallway is off limits to passerbys, it's home to about 21 students and many lovely teachers. One of these patient teachers is Ms. Ford. She spoke to us about what her favorite part about teaching on Dream Street is. My favorite thing about Dream Street is all of my beautiful and intelligent students. Um, my favorite thing about working here is getting to interact with all different types of kids. We have a lot of diversity here on Dream Street. Here's what some students had to say about their hallway away from home. And my favorite Dream Street is Team Legend and Team Power. I like to do Chromebook and movie backs. And I, I like my teachers and I like my friends. I think the teachers had a great time. I like the gym classes, and I like my friends and my teachers. One of the most exciting parts of their day is Unified PE. Here is Ms. Greco to share a bit about these amazing students. Um, my favorite thing about Dream Street is the kids that are on Dream Street. I teach them in Unified PE, and we have so much fun um, learning the new skills that are involved in all of our PE activities. Um, we laugh a lot, and we have a lot of friendships that are made during class. Even though you can't go down Dream Street, I suggest meeting the kind and awesome students that have classes there. Dream Street is phenomenal when you get to know the students and teachers. This has been Maya Lee signing off from... I am News. So that should give you a quick um, insight into what a news package looks like. Now, I have to be completely honest with you. Um, we did not start with a student news show. Like, we just started with one very recently. We started it in January 2019, so one year right before um, the pandemic hit. 
So um, what we did is I, I thought it would be a great elective class for our seventh and eighth graders. So I pitched it to our administrators and I now co-teach it. And these were some of the things that I mentioned um, when I was pinch, pitching this idea of having a student news show class, um, the things that we needed. So there's definitely AASL standards that we're hitting. We're hitting the ISTE standards. And then there's all this added stuff about, you know, it, it displaying equity and inclusion. It promotes our diversity and then student told stories. So whether you are going to have a straight up student news show or you're gonna make it a part of your humanities class or your STEAM class, or use it as a project in science or social studies or math. Um, I want you to know that I took a lot of time to uh, piece together how and why this could support the standards. Now, we talked very quickly about this. When can a student news show or a news segment be creative? It could be done as a part of an elective before or after school. It could be done in class, but the beautiful thing is it can be done right at home um, if your students are using Chromebooks, iPads, or even a mobile device. And basically, as a teacher, you can decide what is your news show going to share? Is it gonna be something that's done in the morning where it's like morning announcements, or is it gonna have longer stories and segments? And we'll, we're gonna hash out both of those here today. Now, you probably are thinking to yourself, do I need fancy equipment? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, you are looking at some of the equipment that we've inherited from our high school. Um, Manchester High School is about 2,000 students big. Um, we're right down the street from them, and they have a very robust student news uh, called The Pulse. And we usually watch it with the students um, to give them models and stuff like that. But you do not need fancy equipment to do a student news show. Um, so here's what you might want to consider. Um, physical tools wise, um, you do need something to record with. So we have a couple video cameras. That's when we're in school. In the fall, we're planning to go back into the school building, which I don't know how it will happen. Um, and we don't know necessarily how we're going to be able to clean our video cameras that quickly. Um, but we also are going to give the option for kids to use their phones. Now at the elementary level or at the high school level, um, iPads and tablets and even just Chromebooks can work. A lot of teachers have asked me just what microphones do you use while the students are at home? The answer is we just use the microphones that are ba baked in right into their school issued Chromebooks or iPads. Um, we do not have fancy microphones at home. And you know what? It's okay. It's the process over perfection. And um, what I really love to encourage with my students is that I have a picture right here. You're looking at um, at the very bottom of the screen is a picture of Carson Daly from the Today Show. And um, what is what it, COVID is teaching all of us is that there is creativity when we are forced in constraint. And what he's actually doing is his segment called Pop Start, and his son made him a graphic so that they could have if they didn't have their fancy graphics. So right now I'm trying like even Jimmy Fallon who does the Tonight Show. He's been working from home with his kids. Um, he's now back in the studio, but it's just him and a couple of people from his camera crew. So I'm trying to enforce with my students, yes, we can keep going even though we're at home. Um, the second picture in the middle right here, uh, the, gentle, the little boy with the headphones on, that's one of my students, Jacob. Um, I got this really great idea because middle school students, and I'm sure there are some at the elementary and high school level as well, but uh, what we experienced is a lot of kids are very shy to record themselves. I've noticed that when we've tried to do Flipgrid in school. Um, and I found this idea actually on Pinterest, but it's a do-it-yourself recording booth. And basically, it's, big, it's a big plastic tub that's just flipped up. And I bought some um, from Amazon, just some of that uh, foam. It's for sound buffering. I put the foam in the inside and Jacob just slide, slid his Chromebook right inside there. The students really like the fact that it's private. Um, a lot of times we can't let our kids just sit in the hallway to record because it's loud in the hallway as well. So those do-it-yourself do it uh, recording booths were really handy this school year while we were in school. Another thing, that uh, this class has taught me is that our students have to be um, taught how to uh, 
uh, what the expectations are for going about the building. For example, uh, the bottom left-hand corner is a picture of our IMS Elling Middle School news press pass. So in order for them to go around the school building um, to, re to get their interviews or whatever they might need, they need to get a teacher-issued press pass. So we give it to them on a lanyard. I went ahead, all of these blue links that are underlined, they're links um, that will take you to the resources that you need. Um, so definitely feel free to take and copy and use it as your own as you see fit. We definitely don't need to use the press passes um, while we're um, at home distance and remote learning, but if we go back in the fall, you can better believe we're using press passes again. As for green screens, I know that they can be pretty um, stressful. You just don't even worry about it. Um, a green screen can be purchased um, at the dollar store using a plastic, it's, you know, those plastic green tablecloths. Um, those work really great for green screens. And depending, depending on what um, editing software that you decide to use, which I'll give you some recommendations for in the next uh, slide, but um, you can just use very cheap, even a blank wall, a white wall works really great. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. Finally, I found um, if you look at the side of our do-it-yourself recording booth, there's a little be mindful of others with your voice. Um, I found some really great posters that um, we made some copies of and put around the classroom to kind of anchor chart. Um, we're big at anchor charts here in Connecticut. So I just wanted to show you, these are some of the physical tools, but if your kids are just working from home, you know what? They just need a Chromebook or some type of device that they can record and this, um, the Chromebooks come with those cameras. So the next picture, our next slide is all about the digital tools. So yes, you do need a Chromebook um, to write your script. You could use paper or pencil for that, but if you're collaborating with a, a partner, um, it's very helpful to have like G Suite tools, Google Docs, all that stuff. Um, so for digital tools, my biggest and most favorite thing um, is WeVideo. They have a free version, which allows you to export a video of up to five minutes um, for free. It will have a Wii video watermark. Um, it's COPA, SERPA, uh, FERPA compliant. Um, and the best part about Wii video is that we've been using the premium version for six years now at the middle school level. And in the past, just this past since COVID, um, our high school, who has that very robust news studio, they were using Adobe Premiere or some, some hugely important package that makes everything look really professional. But the minute that we went to distance learning, they could, they, the kids were out of luck because um, Adobe at that, what they were using for their uh, video editing could not be done on Chromebooks, the, the Apple computers that they were, cannot be taken out of the lab. So my high school video production teacher says, Jess, what should we use? And they use Wii Video at home, and they actually really like it. Um, there's also iMovie and Adobe Spark issue um, if you need to do some video editing. Um, but Wii Video, I really like it because there's a lot of stock footage. If you are using this uh, news project in your social studies class, and they're doing it on the Great Wall of China, uh, they probably aren't going to be able to go get footage of the Great Wall of China. But Wii Video probably has that footage in there. It's all uh, fair use and copyright friendly. Um, other apps that were super helpful helpful for us in school and during distance learning was Flipgrid. Um, a lot of times uh, we would put out a question to our school, like how is things how are things going for you during distance learning, or do you have any shout outs that you want to give? And we would share a Flipgrid code um, to the school, and then the teachers and even the students, they would respond in their Flipgrid and we would have automatic interview footage. So the kids didn't have to go running around the building. It worked out really well. So um, I would highly recommend utilizing Flipgrid um, if you need to get a bunch of interview clips all at once, it's very helpful. Um, for our teleprompter, while we were in school and we had our anchors reading off of this uh, Chrome extension called Teleprompt, it's very easy. I know some teachers, my buddy Bruce in New Jersey, he just uses Google Slides as his teleprompter. Um, so that's just something to keep in your back pocket. Like I mentioned before, G Suite, using your script editing and, and we use Google Classroom. Now that we're in distance learning, I've had students use Google Meet um, to do their interviews with other teachers or with their family members. Uh, so I highly recommend using the G Suite tools that we have at our disposal. And finally, right here at the bottom where it says 
uh, bitdownloader.com. So when you're working with students, obviously they're gonna have opinions about video clips that they might wanna have um, or music that they really like that they wanna have in the background. And this is a wonderful opportunity to talk about um, fair use, uh, digital citizenship in an authentic way. For example, um, I had a couple students that really wanted to use um, a particular song from a musical artist. And I said, okay, well, for educa educational purposes, you can only use it for 30 seconds. And they go, what? I can't use the whole song, miss? I'm like, no. And so it brought up a very, like, um, a great natural lesson on what we can use and how we have to cite pictures that we use in our stories or footage. So um, this bit downloader, it was really helpful for our kids to download um, YouTube clips or videos or audio that they really wanted to have in their story, but it was they can only use that if they're doing it under fair use. So I wanted you to be aware that there's ways that kids can use the pop culture and stuff that they like, but they have to be mindful of the educational reuse policies. Now, um, I'm gonna kind of go fast over this part, but I found that when we were in school, um, it's really helpful to set up stations, especially if this is not gonna be a specials class for you, but you're using it for like your content area class, um, like the core content. Um, so setting up locations in your classroom or special seating and just being consistent about expectations or time limits. Um, I went ahead and put that stuff in there just so you can have it. Not super applicable right now, but. I'm available. Again, I'll give you my email um, before we leave this session today, and you can email me if you have any questions. Now, let's move on to setting the stage. Um, you, for me, I always um, am a huge believer in setting expectations for my kids under some, so they know what I expect of them, that they know the caliber of work I'm looking for. So um, right up here at the top, the first setting the stage activity that we do with our kids um, is that we critique great news. So the first activity um, is, an, uh, I, I, we've curated a list of you, a YouTube playlist of student news shows. And we assigned um, groups of three kids to watch one each uh, group of three gets a different uh, new show to watch and they have to critique it in a reflection activity. What did they like about it? What was a strength? What was a weakness? Then we come together as a whole class. We watch the clips and then the, the kids present on like what they thought was good or, or needed to be worked on. Um, and with that comes discourse about what makes a good news show and what the expectation is. Um, so that is a great way to set a great foundation for what your uh, student segments can and should look like. Um, I will talk later more about my Ma Manchester High School Red Productions, um, but that's also a great place to start if you're looking for high school models. Um, we then talk about expectations. Um, expectations, I've linked in here what our classroom expectations were. They were student created, but a lot of the things that uh, come down to it are timeliness. Um, if we're doing distance learning and you're trying to uh, put out a story, but it's something that's happened four weeks ago. It's not timely anymore. So there's, um, you know, a real push to keep on top of your work and make sure that your story is timely. Then we talked about ethical reporting. When you are interviewing people, whether it be a peer, a teacher, or an adult that you know, you're hold, you're in charge of kind of like being very ethical and upholding that person's reputation and showing them in a way and it's very important to do that and have representation. Um, for example, earlier before uh, COVID came out, there was a new video game, I believe. And um, we sent some kids out because they wanted to do a story on the video game. And they only interviewed boys. And when they came back, we said to them, you didn't interview any girls. What about the, reputa um, the reputation of your story, but also like your representation in the story? So that was a great valuable lesson. Like how are we showing, if you're gonna be doing something on sports, make sure you get a wide variety of student interviews. Flexibility is huge. I made mention to that earlier with Jimmy Fallon and like the Today Show, but with this COVID, we have to be okay with things maybe looking not as exactly how we want it. Flexibility on the teacher's count, but also on the student. Um, if you are working independently or working with a partner, 
being flexible is very important. And maybe one day when your partner is not available, you have to be the interviewer um, instead of the camera person. So we talk about that professionalism and obviously respecting equipment. Um, we spend a little bit of time um, at the beginning of the school year talking about how to take care of the tripods and those types of skills. But at the end of the day, those are things that kind of come along naturally and we didn't want to slow things down. So people always are asking me, Jess, when you have kids um, working in on a new show or working on this project, what do you recommend for group size? Um, and we started off, we learned the hard way. You know, we started off with people in groups of three, but quickly realized that there was um, too little work for each person. So here's my recommendation. I, re I recommend um, that you keep it in pairs, that there's a reporter and then there is the camera person. Um, the person, and there, there's more role, those roles have um, expectations along with them. I'll get into them um, in a little bit, but uh, reporter and camera person. And then once they're done gathering all of their footage, there's the, the video editor, the person in charge of editing the videos itself and putting it together. And then you have the other person um, becoming the voiceover who's doing the background sound. Um, so if you listened to the beginning news story I showed about Dream Street with Miley's and Laylene, there's a lot of voiceover work that has to be done. Um, so I, I see that balance right there. And if you have students that finish early, because you always have students that finish early, um, you need a couple of special roles to be filled. The role of anchor, um, my co-teacher Jill and I, we don't fill that at the beginning of the show. We do that at the end. Um, after students have submitted their work, um, we can then assign anchors, we assign two, and then an executive producer. Um, I recommend the teacher being the executive producer, um, unless you have a student or so that is very good at um, editing together all the segments to make one consecutive news show. Um, we were very lucky to have a couple students this year that were ex excellent uh, executive producers um, up in, like, cause we started in September with them this year. By uh, December, we had a couple students that were really good at being executive producers. They really liked the title. Um, eventually you got to talk about B-roll. So for example, uh, in, in different type of vocabulary. So B-roll um, is, footage that is being shown while the uh, reporter is speaking. So you might have noticed um, that B-roll was showing of the Dream Street hallway, like the, the, the camera person was panning across. Um, sometimes you have to have some nice B-roll to get an idea of the space or the location or of the story that you're presenting on. Um, natural sound Natural sound is so great for storytelling. And this is something um, when you are recording um, and you're editing your footage, um, sometimes you don't want to have loud sound in the background. You want it to be muted in your B-roll, but sometimes you want like a little bit of sound in the background, a little bit of natural sound. So if I was recording a busy hallway, I might wanna keep the vision of the busy hallway with just a little bit of natural sound in the background while I'm doing my voiceover. Um, it's all part of the storytelling. Um, I have a whole thing on framing terms, the different types of shots, establishing or master shot versus close up versus a medium shot, which is from the chest up. So you can have all different types of challenges with your kids for them to understand the different type of shots. Um, and then there just comes the heart of interviewing, the, the anecdotes that kind of naturally pop up when your students start going out and getting their interview footage. And I, we have a saying in our, in our classroom called no bears allowed. Um, so whenever we watch a news episode, our kids always come together afterwards, we watch it and we critique it. We talk about the grow, uh, the glows, the great things and the grows, the areas they need to work on. Here um, is just an image of um, one of a pair of our students was doing an interview on the school counselor, Mr. Biggins, and they were <laughs> recording Mr. Biggins in his office. And as you can see, um, Mr. Biggins' entire interview was done with a huge inflatable bear head behind him. Um, now we watched as a, as a class and the class kind of like erupted in giggles as we were watching this. And I paused and I said, why is everybody laughing? And they go, well, miss, this bear is kind of like dominating the shot. And I go, okay, so what could 
the video reporters have done in this particular situation. Um, and they said, well, we could have filmed Mr. Biggins at a, at a closer angle, angle or at a different angle, but then to, to kind of show Mr. Biggins playful attitude, we could have done some B-roll of his office and shown the bear. And I said, I think that would have been a lot less distracting. So we talk about um, how to capture people's personalities, but not to let it take away from the storytelling. Now, um, for this particular clip, I might as well show it, um, but in the beginning of the school year too, we have kids that are like, I'm not gonna record myself. I'm too nervous, I can't do that. So um, we, I, I start the class with a kind of a conversation. I go, so what would you do if you were on live television and something went terribly, terribly wrong? Um, we have a couple kids raise their hand going like, I just freeze, I do nothingness, I just start crying. Um, we have other kids saying, I would run out. Um, and what I then do after I say all these things is, I, okay, okay, let's, let's watch this quick 40-second um, clip um, from this weather, uh, weather person in Arizona. So let's take a look really quickly. We'll bring you on into the temps, and we're all doing okay. Wow, 750 degrees in Gila Bend right now. Uh, <laughs> and 1,270 uh, in Ahwatukee. Now, I, I'm not authorized to <laughs> evacuate Ahwatukee, but this temperature Creek. seems pretty high. Cade uh, Creek is really Yeah, Cade Creek, Fountain Hills, uh, they don't look good either. <laughs> and frankly, Wickenburg <laughs> is a total loss. You might as well just get out of anywhere along this 60 here. It's a very warm surprise. It's starting to heat up as well at 1,300 degrees. So, uh, again, the safe spots seem to be Chandler and Mesa. Scottsdale is doing okay so far. But, uh, you know, you're sort of surrounded by some pretty intense heat. So, you know, again, I'm not your dad, but I would get out while you still can. I think steel boils at about this temperature. So Cave Creek, there's probably nothing left up there. It goes uh, on right for now. like a couple more seconds. But so we have a discussion after we watch this, we go, okay, so how did the news person or the weather person react when he realized like, oh my gosh, this is all messed up. Well, you can kind of hear him like swallow and make like a nervous, like, oh God, what, am, what is happening right now? But he kind of goes with it. He shows flexibility. He shows poise. You can hear his colleagues in the bathroom being like, background going like, oh, well, what about Cave Creek? And like kind of edging him on. But he takes it in stride. And I think the important lesson to show here is we all want to be like the weather person. We know we're going to be throwing curveballs. And sometimes you just have to roll with the punches. So um, this is a great thing to kind of have kids have a discussion about. I always like it because it's a light a light lesson, but it's an important lesson, I feel, nonetheless. Um, so now you're probably wondering, okay, so what will our new, our new show look like? What is the structure of a new show? Um, and again, whether it's going to be a project or it's going to be an ongoing class, I have some tips for you. So um, perhaps you're thinking, okay, well, really, we're only, I want to be in charge of morning announcements for my school. Um, and I have put down some general things. And even if you click on this link where it says morning announcements, it gives you like a script template for how your kids could do morning announcements if they were doing it, which includes like just the date, the lunch, the joke of the day, stuff like that. But I put a star next to highlighted stories because that's the way that we use student news. We are in charge of morning announcements when we're in session, but the highlighted stories um, is very similar to projects and how projects would be run or how a news class would be run. Um, so what does that look like? Well, there's anchors. We have different blocks, and I'll talk about that in a second, but we have an A block per episode, a B block, and a C block, and then we finish with student and staff shout outs. It's a really great frame for running our new show. Um, how many times a week did we have news shows coming out when we were in school? Um, we had two episodes per week that were watched um, during an advisory period throughout the building. Um, but while we were in distance learning, it was more like one episode every two weeks um, just because the kids were getting adjusted. So let's talk about the stories and the blocks. Now, I actually learned this from our high school because they follow like the national standards of some um, STN student television news. So here's what they told, uh, what I'm modeling after them. The A block is your top news story. So stories that make your school or your district special 
or something that stories that really, really matter. So you always lead with a punch. The second segment or the B block of your new show is um, your uh, other important events. So like an upcoming field trip or maybe, um, you know, the start of a sports season um, and or an activity or a club. And then you can follow follow up with A block stories. But the C block is the cherry on top. It's something lighthearted. Um, it's inspiring. Maybe it's a student or staff highlight story. And I'm, you know, very helpful with that. And then finishing up with just like shout outs to certain students. So to give you an idea, in my opinion, to create a new segment, uh, it takes it takes a little bit of time and it also takes a little bit of structure. Um, I believe that it takes structure to make people creative and it, it can help them. And I feel like this is where we can go. So day one of creating your news story, um, we always start in our class with an editorial staff meeting. And we always ask ourselves, you know, how do we prioritize the news? So this picture you see right here is um, a whiteboard that we have in our classroom. Um, if you look at it carefully over on the left, you can see A block, B block, and C block. And then we have some back burner stellar ideas. So under the A block um, is a story about crew that was assigned to Lailene and Miley's um, on our advisory period. The B block was about our school store. We have a Manchester road race that happens once a year, um, the jazz band. And then finally C block, we have this, um, there was an event called the great debate. There was a teacher highlight. And then uh, we had uh, Aaliyah and Jackson talking about school trends. So in this particular area, in this particular staff meeting, you know, I kind of stand on the side and I say, okay, guys, what do you guys want to do? And it's that authentic student voice and choice. They are coming up with the ideas. They are picking their partners. They're bouncing ideas. And we ask them, okay, so you want to do a story about the road race. What's the story going to be about? What's the angle you're taking about it? Who's going to be watching it? You have to take into account the audience. Maybe you want to inform people that are new to Manchester, what the race is, but also like something more personal in there. So what does it look like? We just gather and we choose stories, we assign partners, and then the kids use um, during, during remote learning, we were using Flipgrid and or Google Forms for the kids to submit ideas. And we realized that Google Forms was a little bit more, um, concise and easier for us to use during remote learning because kids could see very quickly on a Google spreadsheet that we shared with the class, like what everybody's stories were going to be. So I would suggest if you need to host your editorial staff meeting asynchronously during remote learning, that you might want to use a Google form. Um, and if you are in school in the fall, then you could do it like face-to-face -face that way. And just to give you an idea of, we had um, some reoccurring topics, like I said, uh, or for different story segments, like get to know you, um, joke of the day, shout outs, but then there were special segments, whether that be class projects, clubs, or I, one of my favorite things was pop culture phenomenons. Um, one of our first stories ever done was on the mannequin challenge uh, the year before last. So that was very exciting. Um, the second day, okay, so once everybody knows what their role is, what who their partner is, and what their topic for their new segment is, you have to start gathering information. So they have to research, they have to have some general idea about what they what their topic is and get some more information about it. They have to plan who might be somebody we have to interview. Do we have to interview the principal? Do we have to interview interview our peers? Um, or maybe somebody in the community? And then we talk about the who, what, where, when, why, and how. And when you're writing a new story, you wanna be really concise. You, it's a little different than like expository, persuasive writing, um, but really kind of selling, why should people care about your topic and your story? So I'm gonna just um, X out of my presentation really quickly because what does this look like? And I wanna show you very quickly um, that the thing we do get our students talk, thinking about research and planning is we assign the initial scoop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the initial, everything is food related with us. It's all like ice cream related. So we've got the initial scoop and I wanna show you this document really quickly. Um, first, we talk about who are your group members, your story, which block is your story going to be in? And then we have them answer, why is your story important? Is it because it's 
about our community? Is it proximity? Is it human interest? Is there conflict? So they're identifying what is the why behind their story. They have to defend it. Um, and then they have to complete some other following questions like the initial research, what it is, when it is, where it is, and then possible leads. Who do they think to interview and what might be some questions to ask? So the initial scoop, in my opinion, is very important because if the students want to leave my classroom and go in the hallway and start interviewing, I need to make sure that they have a very good understanding of the initial scoop and that their initial scoop is ready to go. So it's kind of like their ticket to the next step. I put a model here of a distance learning initial scoop so that you could all see how we altered that process for distance learning. Okay, by day three, everyone should have started, finished with their initial scoop, and now it's time to start gathering inner information. And this is interviewing. This is understanding the importance of different camera shots and different B-roll that they might need um, and uploading the clips to Google Drive. So um, how does this look? As you can see, we've got Jackson and um, I call him Deadpool. His name is Ryan, but they're on the soccer fields because we're talking about the beginning of the school year in soccer and we have a guy on the ground over here. So let's talk about this. So before the kids can start roaming the halls but um, or even at home working on things, the next step is the group scoop. This is a Google Doc that the pair shares with one another instead of working independently. So I'm just gonna go and show you. This is really scaffolding and uh, accumulating research. We have some kids that really like the group's group to be printed off so that they can write on it. And we have other kids that really like to keep it digitally. Um, so they write their story topic. We have them decide who is the reporter and who is the camera person. And then they have their brainstormed questions that they're going to be asking um, their interviewees. Then we ask them to think before they get into the hallway about what are some of the shots that they're going to capture. So for Jackson and Ryan that were on the soccer field, they know they, they knew they really wanted to get a master or establishing shot of the soccer field. So I went outside with them. Um, you know that, so we want the kids to start brainstorming and planning ahead of time so they're not wasting time in the hallway. Um, they, we also encourage creative shots like um, speeding things up or doing a time lapse. So that can come along with time. Um, page two is all about the interviews. We talk about the importance of writing a person's name correctly and get the spelling right, finding out what their position or role in the school is or in the community. So are they a police officer? Are they a cafeteria worker? We have this, whoever the um, camera person is, has the important job of writing down the interview summary. It can be on bullets, but basically what did this person say in their interview? So that they don't have to spend all this time looking through their video footage. They can just look at this piece of paper or the Google doc and be like, yes, this is what this was about. And then once, they, the, once the group scoop is coming to an end, they can decide, will they use this interview? Um, because many times, some of the people you interview are not always needed. So we put a lot of extra time into the interview. So the group scoop and the coverage can take multiple days. Here you can see um, another one of our students, Mate and Calvin, and they are interviewing this young, lovely young, young lady and having her write her own name down. Um, so a lot of times, the, the group scoop coverage can take multiple times and just giving the students time to upload their video clips to their Google Drive is very helpful. Now by, by day five, so two full days of interviews can be enough if you're in school, but day five is story building. So what is the process for writing a uh, like an actual news story? Um, you don't wanna be too long, you don't wanna be too short, you wanna be concise and clear and you wanna get people's attention. So how can we scaffold that? How can me as a teacher, help my student tell a story through words, but also do it with those video, with that video footage. And here's our final scoop. The final scoop, I linked in here onto this slide, and the final scoop, if you take a look, basically has the students um, think about their A block, B block, the students write their own Lilo's. What the heck is a Lilo, Jessica? You're talking crazy now. A lead in or a, a li, L-I, is what the, um, the, the pair writes 
to kind of say, to introduce a story. So it's what the anchors read before the story segment is shown to the school. So like, oh, we, you know, let's go to Miley's and Laylene with the story on Dream Street, this wonderful hallway that we don't know much about. Um, the Lee Low, the low part of that is what the anchors say at the end. Like, thank you, Laylene. I never knew about Mrs. Ford and what she did in the building. Um, so you can see how they really have to put a bow on it at the end, but also entice people to want to listen to their segment. Um, we put in this nice graph, this nice table right here. So what will, as they're writing their story, what will people hear and what will people see? So how will you, uh, what will you be saying and will there be an interview? So this is the real challenge for kids that I notice is like, how do you build the story, get the facts out that you need, but then how do you match it with the footage that you have? And in my um, slide deck, I put a model here of uh, one that you can look at to see how students will match their voiceovers or their interviews with their B-roll. Now, by day six, um, once their final, scoop, by their final scoop has been okayed, as you notice throughout this entire process, um, myself we're, and, and Jill, the other co-teacher, we're really working with the kids throughout the process. There's checkpoints, there's meeting points to make sure that the kids aren't derailing, to make sure they're hitting their timeliness. Um, but once they have their approved script, then they can start editing and using Wee Video to put all their things together and voicing their, their recordings and their voiceovers. So it's really important for us as the teachers to see that that writing process hits all the marks so that we're not getting, you know, subpar work that's gonna be shown to the school. So we really push the kids with writing on day six. Good I afternoon, good I afternoon, day. good afternoon, and kids welcome, are still welcome, finishing things welcome up. back. You know, you're packaging your, your, your final segment, you're turning it into Google Classroom. Welcome, um, here's Jane, welcome, one of our uh, high school mentors that was helping. And by day eight, there's a couple kids that need to, you know, so a little bit of time. But then this is where you have kids that are ready to share to go, my screen. Um, that are like, please let me be the anchor. So you can see there's Tony and Jordan so sitting here at the anchor. We've got that cool recording for us. And um, and this is where everything Google kind of Drive comes together. Forms the and the new basics. segments are turned in via Google we'll Classroom into a folder. Today, we have our executive now. producer start putting it all together. And we have uh, the anchors. If you don't mind, we do. I am wild. So it really kind of comes your, together on day eight. Uh, and that's really the end afternoon. of the new cycle, except for day nine. Uh, I am your moderator day nine for this afternoon. Day. So uh, this is when we watch I've seen as a some class of you, the entire uh, news show. Faces, and faces, each well, segment, faces, and we also critique also it. And I put a link in here well. for this activity, which is basically could, the pure and personal uh, review. You review yourself, you your um, things you thought you did well, your transitions your were good, your, um, your lower thirds were good, really that or you, maybe the audio awesome. wasn't working too well on your microphone and you need to do a better job at positioning yourself with the My microphone. So I put some examples your in here. In so you watch the Dream Street um, the club on G-Safe. That was very popular uh, segment in our building. Okay. We're almost at the end. Um, I want to give you some extra tips for success. Now, your role um, and your content how do you start? Area, that way like, we as also you can see, you if you know how decide to, to do the new show the as, um, as, as an ongoing well. class, it's, it's very right. much student. Uh, there we go. The kids come in, they know where they have to there be if go. they're on their group got group or if they a need few different people. Oh, we've got some more secondary right people story, this afternoon. This morning, there was a majority class period was to display there a were group more status majority of elementary people. So I'm so excited I'm to have show you some, something that some uh, we, secondary Jill people here this afternoon. With. Awesome. Um, so what we did awesome. is we started a Google spreadsheet and at the bottom, you'll see all of our old episodes. Like you can toggle between the different episodes um, and the story topics. Again, I have. am Wiley so Brady. I have to display this on our bright link or on our projector. And we would know, everybody could be able to see like, okay, the A block for this story in March, or for this uh, episode in March was round one, uh, round one of Battle of the Books was the A block. And Jackson was the reporter and Jordan was the camera person. They were using- All right, the third grade, there we go, some elementary it. people. Um, we know that they and had if you reached their mind, mission. Go ahead and let me know what is- track and uh, we displayed it for all 
the whole class. We've done a few like, different kids trivia kids things. We're really on top uh, and very self-motivated to stay on Let top us know what's things. what's um, your you hot B block story. You know, um, if those Roy of you have participated uh, with me TMZ previously, leads, the whole things about um, you know Kobe that um, and how TMZ you know that I like to also. You know, we always get to know each other professionally, but then I also like to make sure that we have the opportunity to get to know each other personally a little bit as well. And so you might not know what some of some hobbies of your colleagues may be. So let's go ahead and drop oh, in. Miss, what is one of your hobbies or one of your Can you change it to green for us so we don't have orange what anymore? What is one of your it was just kind of like a helpful little time. tip to have in the background. Crafting now, anything the other things that Jill and I learned as we were teaching this yes. class. Um, I, sometimes as a teacher, it's myself, really helpful uh, to just have a Google folder basic you know, like footage, home shared projects. footage, like um, set up and maintain a video of the outside of your school building wow. or a At picture of your projects. principal or a picture of your superintendent. You know, and I've been um, trying to convince my wife like to allow me to usable. put a, a um, We had a couple of students stay after school one wall. day to record you know, the girls' basketball. She's like, no, no, the team no, just got no, selected. But that. we ended up using a lot of that for a bunch of other stories. So that is something to keep in your back pocket. You can All right, then take so that, then utilize your the shared roles. footage folder and put it as a material. And I am Wiley. I am classroom. going to so be, I'm showing up as Ed Tech Team Virtual. But my name is Wiley. Um, the next thing, um, you might and have some so, students in your uh, class that uh, I will really be here monitoring to Google Drive the chat. or are your students that really love Canva or maybe they really like making music. Um, I encourage students, since it's their new show, um, to have them create the, the graphics and using Google Drawings or Photoshop. And Credibox is a really fun tool. I learned from my friend Sylvia Duckworth. She's a sketch noting lady. Um, but basically, you could have your own student news theme song that is student created in Credibox. And then finally, um, we can't really do this right now, but Connecticut's very close to Bristol, Connecticut, where ESPN is. We've had students interview people at local news stations. Um, just anytime you can expose your kids to great news and how it's organized is also very helpful. Now, this is, I get it, I told you everything was food related. Um, sometimes your students need a break. Um, if you're doing a news show class, it can get a little repetitive when you're just like, okay, we're done with one news story. Let's start the next one. Um, you might need a break every once in a while. And my, my co-teacher and I came up with this idea for the students to complete a spoonful, which is basically like a little bite-sized segment. That's kind of fun. It could be a vocabulary word of the day. It could be a dad joke, we call them. Um, so we got, I uh, put some examples in here for you, but these are more uh, like 20 seconds. Maybe somebody wants to do a quick book review, but we make those um, spoonfuls requirements every quarter. They have to complete three spoonfuls so that we can pepper them throughout the show to make the show a little bit more enjoyable. Um, and if you are a high school teacher that's looking for some really great high school um, stories, I encourage you to check out our Manchester High School the pulse um, and we very frequently the high school is always coming out with new content so I watch this very frequently and we show it to the kids being like you know one day you could be here one day you could be sitting at a news desk or working behind the scenes at CBS NBC ABC um, food network who knows so we always are encouraging them now to wrap up um, for those of you, I, I'll talk to Wiley in a couple in a little while and see if there's a way we can get you trained if you're interested on some Wii video. Um, but why using Wii video? Um, it's very simple. Whether you are teaching high school level or very young kids, the platform of Wii video can toggle between a very advanced timeline kind of mode versus for younger kids, you might want a more storyboard format. And that's one of the best things about Wii Video is that it is, um, it, it's easy to use whether you are a novice or an expert. Um, just so you know, what other types of projects can be done using video? Um, we, I encourage you guys to check out the, that textbook um, but you could have kids doing unboxing videos, tutorials, tour videos around their neighborhood while it's their home, screencasts. You could do a podcast even in WeVideo. Um, WeVideo's whole website 
has tons of video challenges for distance learning. I encourage you to take a moment uh, just to take a gander. If you're looking for more inspiration of specifically how you can have your kids creating news segments for your content area, they have a slew of ideas for you. Um, and just to give you some other ideas of other video challenges that we've really, really enjoyed with our kids, because sometimes you just really want your kids to learn the platform of WeVideo or um, iMovie. Um, we've done Mad Libs challenges with our kids where we give our kids, they pick a Mad Lib, and then they have to create the a video of their Mad Lib using the Wii Video stock footage um, before Christmas vacation this year. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched The Office, um, but they have a really great lip sync challenge in the beginning of one of their episodes. And then we challenged our students to do a lip sync challenge before um, school break over winter break, which was really fun. And then here's the one, if we had more time and if I was with you, one of our favorite video challenges we call uh, Creativity and Constraint. So using only stock footage and the sound and music available in WeVideo, we have the students create a short video, um, max of 90 seconds, that tells a story that contains three random elements. So right here, this battery finish line in fresh, this is one that my co-teacher and I made to kind of model how you could tell a story with three random words. So the kids pick um, A, B, C, D, or F, taco, guitar, shampoo, and they have to come up with a 90-second uh, story tops that kind of brings those three words together. It's a very fun challenge, um, but I want to just say that whether your kids are at home, blended, or in person, you can use the templates I gave you and the structure to really bolster their storytelling skills, but also let them have some voice and choice and have some fun. Um, I put a link in here to all of our middle school news shows from this past school year and our IMS um, at home episode. And um, I'll put my email into the chat so that people can email me if they have questions because we're friends now. But um, at the end of the day, I hope that this was helpful. I'll stick around for a couple minutes. Tyler, if there's anybody that has any questions, um, that would be awesome. I can answer those for you. Oh, Wiley's back. Hey, Wiley. <laughs> I'm sorry for talking so much. <laughs> Yay. And again, I went ahead and put my email and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put in There you go. I see your music and your crazy desktop. Yes. <laughs> 